This is a good place to start with our next case called ulcerative colitis, carcinoma, atypia. Here is a colon. Here's the mucosa. Here's the submucosa. Notice a couple of things. Number one, the uh, submucosa and mucosa has a considerable amount of increased infiltrates of inflammatory cells. Not only are they arranged sometimes in primary follicles or perhaps a secondary follicle, but they diffusely infiltrate the connective tissue and smooth muscle of the lamina propria uh, and also uh, the lamina propria in other areas. Notice another thing about this uh, particular colonic mucosa is that uh, it doesn't have uh, as much uniformity in nuclear uh, staining. Sure, there's a good admixture of goblet cells like here, 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 which is nice, but the nuclei are not quite as uniform as they should be. In addition, as you move out more towards the edge of this colon, you'll see very much of the same changes. Also notice, besides the fact there's increased inflammatory changes in the lamina propria, in the mucosa, in the submucosa, that there are some areas of here in which there is an ulceration of the mucosa. This is ulcerative colitis. It's not particularly severe or acute ulcerative colitis in this area, but there is enough uh, glands here in the areas of inflammation and ulceration to make you think that, gee, you know, it looks a little bit atypical. And the point I want to stress with you is that long-standing ulcerative colitis is often associated with atypia and also, therefore, associated with the increase of likelihood of carcinoma. And indeed, if you look deeper into this inflamed area where you see very heavy infiltrates of inflammatory cells and lymphoid cells, uh, as well as ulceration, you can also see that some of these glands extend beyond the mucosa and well into the submucosa. This is cancer. This is an ulcerative colitis that not only has atypia within the mucosa and ulceration, but it also has these downright malignant, irregular infiltrating glands uh, deep to the mucosa as well. I'm going to try to find one more feature of ulcerative colitis, which is not diagnostic for ulcerative colitis, but it is nice to see them because they are often found in ulcerative colitis. And it's the fact that if you looked at these crypts of a Lieberkuhn, which extend towards the base of the, um, of the gland, and perhaps here's a large one, you can see that they often fill up with pus cells. This is what they call a crypt abscess. A crypt abscess is not diagnostic of ulcerative colitis, as for example, a granuloma might be for Crohn's colitis, but it is a very, very, very common feature. I'm almost tempted to look for more if I have the time. So let's look for glands in which you see that they are loaded with, uh, here we go, here's another crypt abscess. But in this case, it may be a malignant gland rather than a normal colonic crypt. I suspect that because it looks like it's beyond the muscularis mucosa and it's hanging out with all these other malignant glands here. Uh, are we going to be lucky enough to find another perhaps smaller crypt abscess? Or would you like to call it a day? Uh, let's call it a day because we have all the features of uh, uh, ulcerative colitis here, including crypt abscesses, including atypia, including uh, change into an absolutely infiltrating uh, malignancy as well. Oh, I'm still 
trying to find that another crypt abscess for you. Oh, here's one. Right there. Textbook crypt abscess. Thank you very much.